When the One Ring and the Other Rings, which dominated a significant part of the Second Age and the whole of the Third Age, ceased to hold sway, the lives of almost all the peoples of Middle-earth changed. For some, it was a good, while for others, it was bad. Hey everyone, and welcome to Middle-earth. I am your guide, Dragon. Today I will discuss how Middle-earth changed after the Sauron's downfall and the diminishing influence of the Rings of Power. As a result of the fall of Sauron and the destruction of the One Ring, the other rings connected to it lost their power. Of course, the most important of these were the three rings used by the elves. One of these rings, Nenya, was used by Galadriel and Galadriel used the power of this ring on Lothlorien where she lived. Nenya's power was preservation and protection. Galadriel used Nenya to protect and nurture Lorien as if it were different from the rest of the world. And time seemed to pass differently here. Another ring of power was Vilya, used by Elrond in Rivendell. Although Vilya's powers are not known exactly, Elrond's healing power may come from this ring. With the loss of Nenya's power, the beauty of Lorien began to fade. The number of Malern trees decreased. After Galadriel traveled to the Undying Lands in 3021 as a ring bearer, her husband Celeborn and a few elves continued to live here. But after a while, Celeborn also left and went to Rivendell. Perhaps it was too much for him to watch the beauty of Lorien fade. But he did not find peace even in Rivendell, where his grandchildren also lived. In the Fourth Age, he too left Middle-earth through the Grey Havens. With his departure, the years of Lorien came to an end. In the Third Age, there were already very few elven people left in Middle-earth. At the end of the Third Age, these few elves continued to leave Middle-earth. One of these people was, of course, the elves of Rivendell. As Elrond was also a ring-bearer, he left Middle-earth with Galadriel in 3021, leaving his children Eladan and Elro here in Rivendell. The two brothers stayed in Middle-earth for a while longer because their sister Arwen was here, and they had been close friends with Aragorn since childhood. But it is not clear what happened to these two brothers after their father Elrond and their grandfather Celeborn left them. It is possible that they went to the Undying Lands with the few elves who remained in Rivendell. The Woodland Realm of Thranduil constitutes the group of elves we know the least about in terms of what happened to them after the destruction of the Ring. These elves felt the negative effects of Sauron's return most acutely in the Third Age. Because the land that became known as Mirkwood after Sauron came to Dol Guldur was one of the worst affected places by his presence. Throughout the Third Age, this forest became a dark and terrifying place where spiders lived. After the complete annihilation of Dol Guldur following the War of the Ring, the forest began to recover, and it was renamed Greenwood the Great. We know that Thranduil and his people lived here for a while, but we do not know whether they went to the Undying Lands like other elves or stayed here after Aragorn's death. In the 20th year of the Fourth Age, Legolas left Greenwood the Great with some elves and journeyed to Athelion with Gimli. They stayed here for about 100 years and contributed to the reconstruction of Minas Tirith. Later, Legolas and Gimli also left Middle-earth, so it is possible that these elves returned to their homeland. You may also guess that the last elf to leave Middle-earth was Círdan, the Lord of the Grey Havens, for it is said that Círdan stayed in Middle-earth until all the elves left for the Undying Lands. In other words, when Círdan sailed with the last ship on an unknown date in the Fourth Age, the Age of Elves in Middle-earth ended completely. Thus, we can say that Middle-earth fell under the rule of humans, because the most populous people were humans. After the War of the Ring, Aragorn united Arnor and Gondor, the kingdoms of Elendil and his sons Isildur and Anarion, and became the first king of the reunited kingdoms. This kingdom stretched east to the Rune Sea, south to the Harnan River, and included the harbor of Umbar. The lands to the west, up to the Great Sea, and all of Eriador to the north were also within the boundaries of this kingdom. But there were a few exceptions. The lands that were given to Rohan centuries ago in the north remained with the Rohirrim. Even though Shire was surrounded by the lands of the reunited kingdom, it was under the rule of the hobbits and could not be entered without their permission. 
In the northwest, as mentioned earlier, Linden, where Cirdan and the Grey Havens were located, was not part of this kingdom. After Aragorn became king, he re-established the Great Council of Gondor. In this council, which had existed in the past, important matters were discussed and the rulers of all the regions could attend. Although its effectiveness decreased during the stewardship period that began with the death of the king, the council still existed until the end. After the war, it was restored to its former state by Aragorn. Aragorn also preserved the stewardship system, and Denethor's son Faramir became the first steward of the United Kingdom. Aragorn established a similar council for the northern kingdom of Arnor. This council consisted of three hobbits, one of whom was the official leader of the hobbits, the Thane, the second was a representative from Shire, and the third was a representative from Buckland. After the war, Minas Tirith and all the regions in Gondor and Arnor that had suffered hard times under Sauron were restored. Dwarves from Erebor, along with Gimli, helped rebuild Minas Tirith, and they built the city's new gate. Ithilien, located in the east of Gondor and close to Mordor, became livable again, and were ruled by Faramir and his wife, Eowyn, who were loyal to the kingdom. The couple lived in a place called Emin Arnon. When Faramir died at the age of 120, his son Elberon took his place. Dol Amroth remained a region loyal to the kingdom as before, with Prince Imrahil at its head. Prince Imrahil had shown great courage in the Battle of Pelennor. Thus, when the kingdom was re-established, he and Faramir became the chief commanders of Aragorn. In the 34th year of the Fourth Age, Imrahil died. Rohan remained independent, as promised. After Theoden, Eomer became king. Eomer renewed the oath that his ancestor had made to Gondor, and the alliance between Gondor and Rohan continued. Rohan developed and prospered after the war. Eomer married Lothiriel, the sister of Imrahil, and remained a close friend of Prince Imrahil until his death in the 63rd year of the Fourth Age. However, these were not the only human people in Middle-earth. There were many humans who fought on Sauron's side. One of them was the Easterlings, who had been enemies of Gondor for centuries, and had caused Gondor to weaken over the centuries with their persistent attacks. After Sauron's destruction, they also withdrew to their own regions. They had suffered a great defeat, and were now without the forces that had protected them. When the kingdom was restored and things were settled, Aragorn's first task was to go to the scattered Easterlings. They no longer had their former strength, and it was easy for the forces from Gondor to disperse them. Thus, at the beginning of the Fourth Age, the threat of the Easterlings was completely eliminated. Another human people that took the side of Sauron and Saruman in the War of the Ring was the Dunlendings. After the battle at the Helm's Deep, Rohirrim's forgiveness of the surviving Dunlendings was surprising to them. After the war ended, they sent ambassadors to King Aragorn. For this reason, no similar campaigns to the east were made against them, and the Dunlendings made peace with both Gondor and Rohan. Very few of the Haradrim who participated in the War of the Ring were able to return to their southern homeland. But little is said about them. They were far from those who wrote history and never interfered in Middle-earth affairs again. In the Fourth Age, the population of the Dwarves had also decreased significantly, and we only have information about the kingdom under the Lonely Mountain. After Dain died, Thorin III succeeded him. They became close to Aragorn, and helped with the restoration of Minas Tirith and Helm's Deep. Some settled in the glittering caves in Helm's Deep, but the greatest kingdom always remained under the Lonely Mountain. And it is said that in the Fourth Age, the dwarves returned to their ancient home of Khazad-dum. But unfortunately, our knowledge about this is limited. Lastly, hobbits, who continued to exist in Middle-earth for a long time, albeit in small numbers. They continued to live in their world in Shire and Buckland, ignoring the outside world, which was Aragorn's greatest desire. He gave them their land and forbade people from entering it. Even when he visited this place later in his life, he did not enter these lands himself. However, the Red Book states that in uncertain ages, hobbits and humans became estranged, and hobbits disappeared from human sight. 
but we don't know how many centuries after this happened. The only question left to answer is what happened to the orcs. We have very little information about this topic. It is certain that many of them were destroyed in the war with Sauron and Saruman, but not all. It is possible that the remaining few orcs lived in deep caves away from prying eyes. Thus, this race, which is as ancient as the elves in Middle-earth, never appeared on the historical stage again. So, that's it for today's journey through Middle-earth tales. If you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe because there's still a lot to share. And don't forget to hit the like button. If you do that, I'll be as happy as a dwarf returned to Khazad Doom.